Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the iconic MGM Grand Garden Arena here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing. This is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. Brought to you all week long by Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations, by AutoZone, get in the zone, by Boost, Mobile Money is Power, by C4 Energy, Energy That Hits, and by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now. Now that I said all that and the bills are paid, this is our undercard press conference on what is shaping up to be an incredible Saturday night from this iconic boxing legendary venue. I look around and I've never felt older in my entire life. Before we get to the undercard presser, I do have an announcement to make on behalf of Top Rank Boxing. Former unified champion George Cambosis Jr has signed a, a multi-fight co-promotional agreement with Top Rank Boxing. Top Rank will work in conjunction with Debella Entertainment and Ferocious Promotions. Top Rank has signed George Cambosis to a multi-fight co-promotional deal. Cambosis will return to the ring shortly. He's actually on his way to Las Vegas. You will see him here this weekend. So be on the lookout for those announcements as George Cambosis Jr. gets back into the ring, signing a co-promotional multi-fight deal with Top Rank. All right, let's get into it. Uh, to my left, Amari Jones. Welcome, thank you for being here. Amari, 19 years old, 8-0, 7 knockouts. You call Las Vegas home. What does this mean to you to have the chance to dance on Saturday night here inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena? Um, first, I want to give a thanks to God. Alhamdulillah. Um, it means a lot, man. Another big card, you know, for the second year in a, or third year in a row. You know what I'm saying? Um, it feels good. Yeah, this is home, right? So you've driven past this building how many times up and down the strip, but now driving up to MGM, parking your car, coming in, you get to put on a show Saturday night. That's got to be a little different than the last time out in Australia. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Australia was, you know, far from home, but, um, you know, went and got the job done. But here in, in Las Vegas, you know, I moved here a couple years ago, and now I call this home. And, um, you know, a lot of fans going to come out, and I can't wait to put on a show for them. Yeah, a lot of people come to Vegas and they're like, ah, I'm going to do a couple months and they end up spending the rest of their lives here. It's a, it's a special place to call home. Talking about your last, uh, your last outing in Australia, an amazing unanimous decision victory. What did you learn from that experience? How did you improve as a fighter looking back on that experience? Um, I improved a lot. I had a, a real tough opponent. Um, I want to say he was number three or number two ranked in Australia. And um, he was really tough and it, it, brought, it brought the best out of me. Um, he didn't come to lay down, and uh, I like those type of opponents because, like I said, it, it shows the best and it brings the best out of me. I mentioned, uh, is it 19 or 21? 21. 21. Yeah, 19's over here. Uh, you're fighting at middleweight at 21. Where do you see yourself eventually landing as you get older and you become, uh, no disrespect, more of a man? For sure. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, right now I can't tell. I'm still, I'm still so young. So. Um, I'm never gonna, gonna not let my body grow at the end of the day. Um, but I don't know, man. Heavyweight, if, if I could. <laughs> Listen, talk about your relationship for a second. You're you're great friends with with Devin. You know, what's that been like? What's his mindset like as as somebody who is a friend of his, being around him all the time, preparing for, you know, in my opinion, the biggest fight of his career as well. Um, absolutely, Devin trains every fight for the biggest fight of his career. Um, like the fight of his life. Um, this fight, um, going into training camp, I can tell it definitely means a lot to him. It's, uh, it's, it's very personal to him. Um, so this fight, man, it's, it's cliche to say like every camp is the best camp, but this one was something special. All week long we've been talking about the stacked card. Obviously you're a part of that. You're taking on Pacino Hill, who's a, who's a tough, tough opponent. Uh, did you have a chance to study tape? Or do you just go in and say, hey, I'm going to do what I do, and I'm putting on a show? Um, of course, I, I studied a little tape on him. Um, he's very tough, but I got real skills. So, you know, Saturday night I'm going to show real skills, and I'm levels above anybody's fault. Listen, Amari, thank you so much for being here. I know Fight Week's crazy. appreciate your time sitting with us. Uh, to my right, your left, I'm going over here to Emiliano Fernando Vargas. Always looking like a million bucks, brother. Thanks for being here. 19 years old. We just saw you in Oklahoma. Second round knockout victory. How's the pro game learning process been for you so far? You're 4-0, three knockouts. 
You're now into this pro game. What's it been like for you? No, well, um, I just want to give a special thanks to Bob Arum, uh, special thanks to Top Rank, uh, my amazing managers. This is truly a blessing. You're talking about fighting at the MGM Grand. It doesn't get, rarely, rarely gets bigger than this. Uh, so I just want to thank everybody involved. Um, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, Saturday, come Saturday night, I'm going to give them another reason to put me on another big card. So, um, but it's, uh, it's definitely a learning experience. Uh, I'm learning fight by fight. You know, having my father there, having uh, Jorge Linares there with me. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a blessing. I'm soaking everything up like a sponge, and you know, you'll, you'll see uh, Saturday night. Like the Maloney brothers, uh, one of the brothers was on last week in Stockton. Right. The same thing with your family. Right. Uh, your brother put on a show in Stockton. This week, it's your turn. How's your family provided you uh, an extra layer of support uh, throughout this process? Because I, I've been bringing up family all week, and right. I know a lot of the media in here has, has been paying attention to the families. This is a family affair this Saturday night, especially in our main event and in our co, right. and with you guys as well. What's, what's the family life been like in this game? You know, it's very supportive. Um, you know, it's first and foremost, it's a blessing to have my dad watching everything and making sure everything's all right. And uh, then having my brothers as well with the weight cuts, uh, with you know the running, the, the sparring, the trainings, they're doing everything that I'm doing. So it doesn't get as lonely, you know, uh, this sport, it does get lonely, but with my brothers there, their support, you know, everything my father went through, I'm gonna go through, everything that my brothers are going through, I'm going through, so it's definitely a family affair. Um, it's a blessing to have them there and here in uh, beautiful Los Vargas, Nevada. So, <laughs> I, love, I think we need a t-shirt. Is there a t-shirt guy go. in we the house? Can we get Los, Los Vargas, Nevada, please? <laughs> Put that on the Top Rank website. By the way, Top Rank just launched an incredible new merch website. So everybody watching, go to toprank.com, click on the shop tab. A bunch of new stuff just dropped. Um, I, I do want to talk about your father for a second. Obviously a legend in the sport. And when we look at our main event Saturday night, there's this incredible father-son relationship holding all four belts. Obviously, I think it goes without saying that that's where you aspire to be. Talk about your father and what he means to you inside and outside the ring. I uh, actually, for this fight, um, one of my favorite photos, and uh, I'll show it on my phone right now, is my, my wallpaper, my dad walking out. And you see a silhouette of him and everybody, all the fans around him. And uh, I've been soaking that in. I uh, can't wait to make that walk. I can't wait to soak it in. I can't wait to have thousands of fans scream my name, scream the Vargas name again. And especially MGM Grand, it doesn't get no better than this. Um, you know, don't cry. Don't cry, Vato. All right? <laughs> All right. I'm about to cry. You're about to yeah, make me no, cry. Yeah, I love that man, though, man. I wouldn't be here without him. And uh, come uh, Saturday night, man, I'm going to soak everything in. Uh, this is where I know I'm supposed to be. And, uh, you know, I'm only, I'm only 19 years old. It's going to get real scary in a couple of years. I just, I'm going to get the experience. And, uh, you know, then, then we'll have those belts. Enjoy every minute of it. We'll see you tomorrow on the scales. Emiliano, thanks for being Thank with you, us everybody. today. Uh, sitting with me now on stage as, as we have uh, both opponents here with me, uh, eight rounds in the middleweight division, Nico Ali Walsh, Danny Rosenberger. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Nico, let's start with you. Um, this is the first time you're walking into an eight-round fight. First time working with Jamie Bell. Let's dive into yes. that a little bit. How has that experience been with Jamie? Oh, man. Jamie is, well, first off, I want to say a hum to a lot. Uh, thank God so much for being here, and I've got to thank uh, Bob Arum, Brad Jacobs, Brad Goodman, and Bruce Trampler for just giving me this opportunity and this platform. But uh, yeah, Jamie is a killer. Uh, this camp has been the toughest by far. Um, it's a blessing that I'm able to work with him, and uh, you will see the massive improvement from last fight, uh, this next fight. Yeah, he's, he's one of the top strength and conditioning coaches. I can't even walk up the stairs anymore here at the Grand Garden, and I, I see the videos that he posts on social, and I, I want to vomit. He would make you run them. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Uh, eight rounds, though, first time going into eight. Do, does that change the mindset? Do you change the approach in camp, or is it just business as usual? I believe it's business as usual because um, this camp, I mean, 
This camp I trained with Kenny Sims, who just fought a 12-round uh, title eliminator. So I'm prepared for 12 rounds this fight. Uh, I trained like I'm fighting for a title eliminator because we were doing the same uh, stuff. So the rounds don't really matter. I love more rounds because it's just more experience. Uh, numerically, you can see it that I've done more rounds. I think that's great. Um, but no, it doesn't change anything. Danny, I'm coming over to you. Danny Rosenberger, uh, you are from Ohio. And you, your family has a, an incredible boxing history. Your father, Rusty, was an, an amazing cruiserweight. Uh, your late uncle, Razor, was a, an amazing welterweight. Right. How excited are you uh, and your family to be here uh, in Vegas on this incredible card? Uh, you know, thank you, Top Rank, everybody here. Um, yeah, so mostly my dad, very excited. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> so he's texted me every day, probably you know, five, six times in a row. You know, tell me the magnitude of everything that's going on. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes I'm like, Dad, like, like, I get it. I know who I'm fighting. I know who his grandpa was, you know, a tough kid. Like, I understand. But still, you know, he's so excited, which gets me excited. It makes me feed off the energy. I just love it. Your age and experience, you said, will help you Saturday night. Uh, is this an opportunity? And you said this is an opportunity you don't want to waste. Put that into words. What can we expect from you Saturday night? Um, yeah, so I definitely have experience. I have a lot of fights under my belt. Um, you know, I have nine losses, but don't judge me by my past, everybody. I don't live there anymore, all right? I'm right now. <laughs> and I uh, won my last seven. I've been working really hard. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping my experience in the ring compared to his will give me a little edge. But uh, I know he's going to give me everything he has. I know he's had a good camp, he said. And uh, you know, so if we, we put the work in. So we're just excited to get out there and put a show on. Nico, uh, your last fight went the distance. You put your opponent on the mat, um, but he pushed you through six. What did you take away from that fight? Like, you thought that thing was over. We all did. We were all sitting ringside, and that, that kid got back up, and he was tough, and he, he pushed you through all oh, six. Oh, hey, I did not think it was over. I knew he was tough. When he went down, I was expecting him to get up right then. Uh, so I, I knew who he was before I got into that fight. Um, and I'm so happy I went uh, six rounds. I was expecting to go six rounds that last fight. And uh, again, that's just more experience for me. And he was so tough, but I knew he would be. So I'm, I'm very uh, thankful for that last fight. Danny, Golden String Boxing Gym in Youngstown. We gotta give a big shout out to that gym back in Youngstown. What makes that place so special for you when it comes to working out? Uh, so with that, you know, you go down these steps, it's an old, gritty place you know you walk in the gym you're like oh man people sweat and bleed in this place you know that old Youngstown you know rust belt type it's exactly the type of gym it is like you know you're you know you're in bust your ass while you're in there uh, how many levels underground is it I get a little cluster oh. folk I don't even know <laughs> no, if I'm only, cover uh, your camp. you go down a couple steps and about five more I don't know dude you just gotta come scary. find out what's a, what's a typical day in that gym like uh, well typical uh, in there so I train usually from four to six you know, then I do my strength and conditioning. Uh, you know, I do own a masonry company, so I do that all day. The masonry and chimney doctors. Yeah, so I do that from, uh, you know, 7 a.m. till 4 o'clock. And uh, then I leave straight from work. You know, I carry brick, block, stone, I do. It's my company, and you know, I go right to the gym after, then put that work in, the strength and conditioning, the running. You know, so, uh, you know, my, my days are pretty full. It's almost, it sounds like a Rocky movie montage where we can just send the top ranked cameras out there. We'll put some music underneath you, show you carrying bricks, and then go to the boxing gym, which happens to be in the basement in Youngstown, Ohio. Right. Hey, listen, thanks so much for being here. Uh, Nico, uh, one last one for you. You know, and again, I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but I am because family has been brought up so much yes. this week with everybody that's on this card. And I think that's what makes boxing so special is just the families behind all of the fighters. Uh, how special is it for you to be back in Vegas? It's your second time, uh, you know, fighting here. You, you said it's my second homecoming. Uh, it's got to be not just something special for you, but I look around and see your family with us here today. How, how special is it for you guys as a family? Uh, it's, it's super special. Um, I, I think it's not just Vegas, because obviously Vegas is home now. Uh, the fact that it's in the MGM, I'm standing on the grounds where I used to hang out with my, my family and of course my grandfather. So uh, it's, it's just amazing. The, the MGM brings back so much nostalgia. Uh, it, it makes me feel so much, that much more powerful. I remember actually seeing uh, Bob Arum years ago come to uh, 
the, my grandfather's 70th party here at the MGM, so it's crazy that um, everything's coming back around and uh, it's, it's a super blessing. Well, I imagine you'll have many more appearances in this building. Thank you so much for spending time Thank with us. Thank you. Listen, everybody's talking about the main event. We're kind of forgetting that there's another title on the line Saturday night. The vacant WBO Junior Bantamweight World title is on the line, and they are with me here as well. Junto Nakatani from Japan, Andrew Maloney from Australia, the WBO number one ranked fighter, the WBO number two ranked fighter. This one has fireworks written all over it. Andrew, I'm gonna start with you. How special is it for you to not only be fighting in the United States, but here in Vegas, in this iconic MGM Grand Garden Arena for a world title? Uh, honestly, it's just amazing. Um, I was gonna say it's a dream come true, but this is even big, bigger than that, better than that. This is like the wildest dream, way better than anything I could ever imagine to fight for a world title here in Vegas at the MGM Grand, one week after my brother became world champion in Stockton, California last weekend. Now it's my turn to become world champion in Vegas at the MGM Grand on one of the biggest cards of the year in boxing. You couldn't write the story any better. Um, and that's why I'm just so excited for this Saturday night. I know this is my time. This is how our story was supposed to unfold and this is destiny. I'm gonna become world champion. I love it. Junto Nakatani, welcome to the United States as well. How has this week been for you so far? Has it been a little overwhelming or have you settled into all things Las Vegas? And we have Nobu off stage as well, but if you wanted to make a statement first, please, welcome. Um, first of all, thank you for the top rank and taking promotion and my team. Uh, thank you for such a big stage. Uh, I've been training very hard for May 20. All that left is to demonstrate. I want to make an impression on boxing fans in Las Vegas and around the world. Thank you very much. Would you like to address everybody uh, watching in Japan as well in, in your native tongue? Please be our guest. I'm confident that I will be going home with a belt. Uh, I hope that you'll be able to watch the fight. Nobu, I'd like to ask him. He's been sparring uh, at various gyms in California. He's been there for the past 10 weeks. Can he uh, just talk about his sparring experience going from gym to gym in California? え、ロサンゼルスで1週間、え、スパリングなどいろんなところのジムでやられ続けてますけれども、どのような経験をされましたか? Yes, uh, I was able to spar with many, many different types of fighters. And uh, I I I sparred around 300 rounds. So it was a very good experience for me. Anything else that's good? Can I, okay, I'm going this direction. All right, Andrew, you said to be the man, you got to beat the man. I saw that quote in an interview you did recently. You're facing a tough opponent sitting to my left. Um, but these are the steps you have to go through to become world champion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Junto's a, a, a good fighter. He was a world champion. He's undefeated, and he's pretty avoided in this weight division. We saw. Kazuto Aoka decided to vacate his belt rather than fight Nakatani. But as you've seen from me and my brother, we, we, we'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Whatever we have to do to become world champion, we'll do. We've, we've dedicated our lives to this sport for 20 years now. And I'm just thankful that things played out like this and Nakata, uh, sorry, Aoka did vacate his belt. And I did get the opportunity to fight Nakatani the story couldn't have unfolded any better. One week after my brother, I get the opportunity now to become world champion. And uh, I'm just so excited, so grateful for the opportunity. Thank you to everyone at Top Rank for making this happen and, and writing this story. And now I've got to grab that opportunity with both hands and make sure I leave that ring with that belt strapped around my waist. I was in Stockton last week. Uh, obviously, uh, I read the decision. 
And I was able to see out of the corner of my eye your response, not just your brother's, to, to me reading those results. What's that going to feel like for you when you're in the ring and maybe I read those results and they're in your favor? There's, gonna be, there's no words to describe the feeling that's going to be. Um, I was so happy for my brother Jason. I know what he's been through for the last 20 years. We've, we've done this side by side. Um, and now it's only fitting that we both go home with those world titles on the plane, back to Australia and celebrate with all our friends, family, team, sponsors and supporters and everyone who helped make this possible. Um, there's no way I'm leaving that ring without that belt. Nobu, I, I'd like to ask Junton. He's been trained by Rudy Hernandez since he was 15 years old. What would this title mean to Rudy? え、ルディ、ルディに15歳からトレーニングをしてもらって、あのトレーナーとして教えてもらってますけれども、これはルディにとってあなた、あなたのこの世界ベルトを取ったらどういう意味だと思いますか。そうですね。まあ、1つのあ